<clears throat> May I have your attention, please? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Youth Sunday. Um, this past summer, uh, most of us went to camp, and this morning we would like to share a little bit about our camp experiences. To help set the proper camp atmosphere, I would like to share a short poem entitled Summer Camp Souvenirs by Richard Thomas. <clears throat> When I got home from camp today, my parents almost died. They asked me how I got this way, and here's what I replied. This little cast from heel to hip is nothing much at all. Some broken shingles made me slip from off the dining hall. The poison ivy's not so bad. It missed my back and chest. Of course, I guess I ought to add mosquitoes got the rest. I tried to eat some hickory nuts and cracked a tooth or two. All these bruises, scabs, and cuts, I haven't got a clue. I got the lump that's on my head from diving in the lake. I should have watched for rocks instead of grabbing for the snake. That leaves this bandage on my chin and these three finger sprains, along with lots of sunburned skin and sniffles from the rain. And oh, I got a muscle cramp and very nearly drowned. It's some terrific summer camp, the coolest one around. Uh, We have several announcements this morning. Um, gift card orders are due next Sunday. Uh, the pumpkin roll orders are also due next Sunday, and the pumpkin rolls are being made Monday nights, and all help is welcome. Uh, the children's consignment sale is Saturday, October 20th. Uh, the youth will be selling baked goods, so if you would like to donate a baked good, please contact Lindsay or Karen. Um, Earl Liskey has an announcement about the Popeye dinner. Good morning. How many in here like chicken pot pie? your hands up. Well, that's pretty many. We're having a chicken pot pie dinner Saturday, November 10th, serving from 5 to 7. There are tickets in the gathering place. Uh, I'll be back there after church is out. Uh, Packs of 10. There are also single packs if you don't want to take 10. Um, We need to sell tickets this year. Sell as many as you can. Uh, It's a fundraiser for the youth. Half goes to the youth and half goes to our church treasury. Uh, if you want the menu, my wife says i got to tell you what we're having. Besides chicken, we're having lettuce with bacon dressing, applesauce, rolls, cake, coffee, and tea and water. Uh, we need the final count by October 28th. So sell tickets. Thank you. Susie Dundor has an announcement about trunk or treat. Fall has arrived, and it's time again for the trunk or treat here in the back parking lot. And that'll be October 27th, and it goes from 4 to 6. Uh, you can decorate your cars for on the back parking lot, which you'll see the pictures going. Uh, bringing Halloween to our parking lot where children can go from car to car and get candy in a safe environment. Get creative and sign up to decorate your car and be part of the fun. There will be games, hot dogs, prizes will be provided. Uh, Please consider signing up. There will be signing up sheets in the gathering place to help with. You can either decorate your car. You can sign up in helping with food. Bring uh, for like hot dog buns and all kinds of other stuff. And for the games and We'll have a sign-up sheet to donate items, too. Uh, If you have any questions, uh, Rachel knows, and also Kim Horn or any member of the Mission Fellowship Commission. Thank you. Uh, Are there any other announcements this morning? If not, uh, Janet Double has an announcement about the intention card. Good morning. Last week, Andy Heisey addressed with you the process for the development of an annual church budget. He shared that the members of your church board are requesting input from our entire congregation. The first step in this process is the implementation of these intention cards that were in your bulletins last week to give the congregation, all of you, an opportunity to anonymously indicate the amount that you might be able to contribute to the the ministry of our church. Um, We're actually calling our budget a ministry implementation plan. 
and um, that will happen next week. You'll have the opportunity to bring your cards up and present them directly to God at the altar. You have the option of putting in the con um, collection plate, or there will be a box at the at the back. Uh, there will be cards available next week too, if you if you need them. So the second step in our plan is to provide you, our congregation, with a comprehensive overview of our, our church's story. That is a brief summary of the responsibilities of each of the five commissions that make up our board, along with the 2018 budget numbers for each of these commissions. Many years ago, the church created a welcome booklet that was developed and handed out to visitors to our church. Currently, the Missions and Fellowship Commission is working and is in the process of updating this uh, book. In this book was listed several statements that describe the beliefs of our congregation, and I would like to share those statements with you now. Our congregation is founded upon the faith that there is one God who is a personal Father God who in holy love creates, sustains, and orders all. Our church, our congregation confesses Jesus Christ as the Lord of the church and of all life. Our congregation believes that the gospel is the good news that God was in Christ re reconciling the world unto himself. Through the gospel, God's sovereign will and Christ's redeeming grace are revealed. Our congregation holds that the church is the body of Christ and is under the Lord's mandate to be faithful in accepting and transmitting the gospel by word and deed. And our congregation believes that the Holy Spirit is at work in the hearts and minds of believers, creating and sustaining the church through the gospel, giving guidance and comfort, and uniting believers with their Lord and with one another. Our church accepts the ministry of the church to be the proclamation and fulfillment of the gospel for all people. And our congregation considers that all members of the congregation of the body of believers are responsible for the total ministry of the church. The church board consists of five commissions, the Commission of Ministry and Evangelism, the Commission of Christian Education, the Commission of Missions and Fellowship, the Commission of Finance and Stewardship, and the Commission of Trustee and Property. I want to talk first about the Ministry and Evangelism Commission. These expenses that you see in front of you include the pastoral placement and assistance support of the pastor, arranging for pulpit supply in pastoral absence, arrangement of evangelical services, special programs and radio ministry, oversight of the choir and music programs, and oversight of the church secretary, organist, and choir directors. Next is the Christian Education Commission, and these expenses include the planning and direction of Sunday school, vacation Bible school, children's church, camping participants, the oversight of the youth and youth advisors, and the supervision of the library, publications, and literature. And the next commission is the Missions and Fellowship Commission. And these expenses include support and implementation of outreach and missions programs, promotion of disaster relief projects, church-wide and community-wide fellowship activities, and maintenance of an updated church directory. The Finance and Stewardship Commission, and these expenses include responsibility for the entire financial program of the church, including the receiving, counting, and dispersing of funds of the church uh, to interpret the co to the congregation the outreach program of the Brotherhood, district, colleges, and camps, and to work with the church board to build and submit for congregational approval an annual budget for the entire church program. And the next one is the Trustee and Property Commission. These expenses include the care and maintenance of all church properties and grounds, maintenance of adequate insurance for all church properties and furnishings, Recommendation to the board, the employment and salary of inside and outside custodial staff. Consideration of requests for the use of the church equipment and property. And provision for safekeeping of all property, deeds, and insurance policies, etc. Oops, sorry. 
This chart shows the breakdown of our current budget, our 2018 budget, and you will see that over 50 percent of our budget it was dedicated to the ministry of our church. We will continue to communicate with you throughout the development of our 2019 ministry investment plan. If you have any questions you see listed on the slide here, the members are of our executive board. You may please feel free to contact any one of us. Next week, we will have our celebration of intentions. Please complete an intentions card, and you will have the opportunity, as I said earlier, to come up and place it directly on the altar. This is your opportunity to communicate with God and give your presentation of your gifts to our Lord. But you will also have the option of placing it into the collection plate, and we will have a box at the back. So whatever you are most comfortable with. And again, remember, these are totally anonymous, and we are just doing this so as we build our ministry investment plan, we have an idea of the funds that we will um, have intended for the 2019 year. Thank you very much, and enjoy the service today. It's going to be amazing. Thank you. All right, next up this morning is the chimes performance.
Come, let us use our voices to praise the Lord. Let us use our minds to ponder the wondrous deeds of God. We call to mind God's mighty acts. With all the strength and being, let us worship the the Lord of love. God, our passionate life, we bless you for the infinite beauty of created things, sand, wind, wave, and the wings of an eagle, for the love of the land, for the vine of the fruit, and the good wine. We bless you for the endurance of hope, for the promise of renewal, and the fleeting moments of the mountaintop. Let us pray. God, we are here to worship you. We thank you for all the good things you give us. We look at your creation and we walk and we thank you for all of the beauty we see, from the fields in Pennsylvania to the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. You show us your power in all of your amazing works of creation. Help us to worship you in this service today. Amen. Can the children come up for a children's story? I have a microphone. I'm prepared. So, some more coming up? I pay. One more. Book. This is a book that I chose for us to do for a story. Why can't I sing it? Is this everyone? Alrighty. Hi. So the book I chose was Small Music. We I read this last year with, at camp. And I decided to share this book because it meant a lot to me. So it's Small Music. Here. You children sit up here. Right, there's pictures. Whoa. Yeah, see that's in front of me? Like okay. facing me? Yeah. It's over here so I'm going to flip it. All right, we got pictures up there. All right, Mole Music. Written by David McPhail. Mole lived alone underground. He spent his days digging tunnels. At night, he ate his supper in front of the TV and then went to bed. Mole liked his life, but lately he had begun to feel there was something missing. You gotta read that. One night on the television, a man played the violin. He made the most beautiful music Mole had ever heard. I want to make music beautiful, uh, beautiful music too, Mole said to himself. So the next day, he sent away for a violin of his own. Every day, Mole checked his mailbox. No violin. Finally, after nearly three weeks, it arrived. Mole was so excited. He picked up the violin and drew the bow across the strings. But instead of beautiful music, all he made was a horrible screeching sound. Mole tried again. The violin still screeched, but not quite so horribly. Mole kept at it. After about a week, he could play one note, then two. And before a month went by, he could play an entire scale. Mole continued to practice. He learned to put the notes together in a simple song. Years went by. Mole got better and better. I don't know. He was happier than he'd ever been. During the day, as he dug his tunnels, Mole hummed the music he would play at night. Now Mole played even better than the man he'd seen on TV so long ago. Sometimes he'd wonder what it would be like to play his music for people. He imagined himself playing before a huge audience. He imagined that he'd play for presidents and queens. He 
even imagined that his music could reach into people's hearts and melt away their anger and sadness. Why, maybe his music could even change the world. Mole laughed at himself. How silly am I, he thought, imagining that my music could do all that when no one has ever even heard it. Mole played one more song and put down his violin and went to sleep and dreamed beautiful, peaceful dreams. So, if you, if you saw in the pictures above, everything Mole dreamed about, he was wishing was happening, was happening right above him, even without him noticing. So, the moral of the story, which I really loved, was that even if, even if you don't realize it, your actions have a huge impact on people. Even the smallest thing can make someone's day. And then we have a small little prayer. You all fold your hands? Yep, I wrote it down. Dear God, thank you for, thank you for good friends. Help us to be a good friend, too. Help us to be a good friend, too. Help us be a good example of your love. Help us be a good example of your love. Amen. Amen. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thank you. All right. Um, next, we have a song that we learned from Camps to Talk. Alrighty. Um, next we have a song we learned from Camp Satara. It's a repeat after me song. Thank you. So whatever I say or do, we would ask you. We ask you to repeat it. And then we also ask for you to keep a beat with me. Okay. Going on a squeegee hunt. Going on a squeegee hunt. Gonna catch a big one. Gonna catch a big one. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. What's that up ahead? What's that up ahead? Some tall grass. Some tall grass. Can't go around it. Can't go around it. Can't go over it. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Can't go under it. Have to go through it. Have to go through it. Going on a squeegee hunt. Gonna catch a big one. I'm not afraid. What's that up ahead? Some thick mud. Can't go around it. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Have to go through it. Going on a squeegee hunt. Big one. I'm not afraid. What's that up ahead? A tall tree. Can't go around it. Can't go under it. Can't go through it. Have to climb up it. Catch a big one. I'm not afraid. What's that up ahead? A thick vine. Can't go around it. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Have to swing on it.
squeegee hunt. Gonna catch a big one. I'm not afraid. Up ahead. Field of Mimi's. Can't go around it. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Have to go through it. the child on our exploration. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Just saying that was not planned. <laughs> Going on a squeegee hunt. <laughs> Gonna catch a big one. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. <laughs> What's that up ahead? A big cave. Can't go around it. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Have to go through it. It's dark in here. So let's rock. Okay. What else is there? What's this? It's a. It's fur all over it. It's got six eyes. Pointy ears. It's nice little horns on its head. It's a squeegee. Come on. Through the field of Mimi's. All right. Through the vine. Oh, over the tree. Okay. Through the mud. Grass. Slam the door. I'm not afraid. May the officers please come forward. Dear God, I offer you my praise. I offer you my heart. I offer you my money. I offer you my life. Thank you for everything you give to me. Amen.
morning. I'm not a youth, just so you know that. But I wanted to give uh, some uh, prayer concerns before Kate has the morning prayer. Uh, in your bulletin, you'll see uh, names that we need to remember in prayer. Um, I visited uh, uh, Glenn uh, Hassinger. And for those of you who don't know, he had a fall and broke some ribs. And uh, he is still at home, not able to get around very well, but he is healing up. So keep him in prayer. Uh, also, we need to remember Mary Lineweaver. Mary Lineweaver, um, health is failing right now, and she is at Manor Care right now. Also, we need to remember uh, Walter Satizay. Walter is having uh, surgery tomorrow at Lancaster General. Also, prayer for healing for uh, Brenda Weyerbach. Brenda Weyerbach. And finally, I want to lift up our um, revival services coming up here uh, next Sunday, uh, Lord willing, in the evening. Um, it has in a bulletin that uh, myself and Jim Meyer will be uh, leading Love Feast, actually, uh, after having the deacons meeting and after talking with uh, Jim, Brother Jim. Jim's going to lead uh, the Love Feast and Communion, so we hope that you can come out. And also keep Jim in prayer. Jim is having problems with his hip. He had back surgery here a couple of weeks ago, and he said the back surgery went fine, but right now he's having some problems with uh, his hip. So um, he says that he says if he can make it up to the pulpit, he says he'll be doing good. So uh, just uh, keep him in prayer as we approach our revival services. Please pray with me. God, we love you, and we thank you for your infinite love for us. You showed us through Jesus how much you love us, and we thank you for his sacrifice. Please show us more of yourself and help us to love others as you have shown us how to love. Speak to us today and help us to be more like you. Amen. Um, please follow along as I read the scripture from Job chapter 12, 7 through 10. But now ask the beasts, and they will teach you, and the birds of the air, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will t teach you, and the fish of the sea will explain to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this, in th whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? This mess the message this morning is a collection of stories about nature and songs from songs from camp, excuse me. The first reading is Run in the Rain by Bob Perks. She had shop she had been shopping with her mom in Walmart. She must have been six years old, this beautiful red haired, freckle faced image of innocence. It was pouring outside. The kind of rain that gushes over the top of rain gutters so much in a hurry to hit the earth that it has no time to flow down the spout. We all stood there under the awning and just inside the door of the Walmart. We waited, some patiently, others irritated because nature messed up their hurried day. I am always mesmerized by rainfall. I got lost in the sound and sight of the heavens washing away the dirt and dust of the world. Memories of running, splashing, so carefree as a child came pouring in as a welcome reprieve for the, <coughs> excuse me, from the worries of my day. Her voice was so sweet as it broke the hypnotic trance we were all caught in. Mom, let's run through the rain, she said. What? My ma mom asked. Let's run through the rain, she repeated. No, honey, we'll wait until it slows down a bit, Mom replied. This young child waited about another minute and she and repeated, Mom, let's run through the rain. We'll get soaked if we do, Mom said. No, we won't, Mom. That's not what you said this morning, the young girl said as she tugged at her mom's arm. This morning? When did I say we could run through the rain and not get wet? Don't you remember? When you were talking to Daddy about his cancer, you said, If God can get caught, can get us through this, he can get us through anything. The entire crowd stopped dead silent. I swear you could hear anything but the rain. 
We all stood silently. No one came or left in the next few minutes. Mom paused and thought for a moment about what she would say. Now some would laugh it off and scold her for being silly. Some might even ignore what, she, what was said. But this was a moment of affirmation in a young child's life, a time when innocent trust can be nurtured so that it will bloom into faith. Honey, you are absolutely right. Let's run through the rain. If God lets us get wet, well, maybe we just need wa needed washing, Mom said. They, they all, then off they ran. We all stood watching, smiling, and laughing as they darted past the cars and, yes, through the puddles. They held their shopping bags over their heads just in case. They got soaked, but they were followed by a few who screamed and laughed like children all the way to their cars. And, yes, I did. I ran, too. I got wet. I guess I needed washing. I just want to be a sheep back. I just want to be a sheep back. I pray the Lord my soul to keep no back. I just want to be a sheep back. I don't want to be a hypocrite. No way. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Uh-uh. Cause they're just not hip with it. Oh. I just want to be a sheep back. I just want to be a sheep back. Praise the Lord my soul to keep no back. I just want to be a sheep back. I don't want to be from Babylon, no way. I don't want to be from Babylon, uh-uh. Cause it's just Babylon, on and on and on. I just want to be a sheep back. I just want to be a sheep back. I praise the Lord my soul to keep no back. I just want to be a sheep back. I don't want to be a Pharisee, no way. I don't want to be a Pharisee, uh-uh. Cause they're just not fair, you see, oh. I just want to be a sheep back. I just want to be a sheep back. I praise the Lord, my soul to keep no back. I just want to be a sheep back. I don't want to be a Canaanite, no way. I don't want to be a Canaanite, uh-uh. Cause they just raised Cain tonight, oh! I just wanna be a sheep back. I just wanna be a sheep back. Praise the Lord, my soul to keep no back. I just wanna be a sheep back. I don't wanna be a Sadducee, no way. I don't wanna be a Sadducee, uh-uh. Cause they're just so sad, you see, oh! I just wanna be a sheep back. I just wanna be a sheep back. Praise the Lord, my soul to keep no back. I just want to be a sheep back. <laughs> Coming through garden magazines is a lot of fun. They give all kinds of ideas for your home garden. You've seen those detailed spreads mapping out the kinds of plants of various heights and sizes that work well together, and then showing photos of the finished gardens with suggestions for seating and sculptures and water features. The images are so beautiful, but I especially appreciate how they spark my imagination and creativity. They open my mind and help me see more from my yard than I did before. It's similar to looking through a kaleidoscope. Hold one eye up to your eye, hold one up to your eye, turn it, and suddenly you see patterns and colors emerge and emerge and change into something totally new and different. Garden books and kaleidoscopes are incredible gifts to help us get in touch with God's capacity for creative possibility in the world. P Peter needed tools like these. Jesus began sharing about his future, suffering, death, and resurrection. And all Peter can do is scold him. Peter can only see, only sees the plain facts of the impending death and loss. He cannot see the possibility or plan for something greater. He has no eye for the beauty and light that will eventually come through. I want to sit with Peter and show him the garden books, bring him a kaleidoscope, help him see beyond his limitations to capture the creative, imaginative vision of God. Offer Peter some tangible practice to move his thoughts toward the divine things of God instead of the human things controlled by our fears. What might you pick up and, or play with today to expand your vision of God's kingdom? Love yourselves, love the Lord your God. 
So this poem is Leaves by Betty Killebrew. Leaves on trees and in the book, both are worth a second look. Leaves that grow upon the trees murmur softly in the breeze. Listen closely, you will hear creation's message in your ear. If you decide to take a look at the leaves of the good book, you will read about the way creation took just six short days. Hold a leaf within your hand See God's being in each strand. The nature of this simple thing can only one conclusion bring. The accident could not have made the complexity of leaves that shade. Divine intelligence is clear to see in the leaf design of every tree. And as each year new leaves spring out, God exists without a doubt. And I believe that God's full plan includes provision for trees and man. That just as leaves we body here, we are reborn when life ends here. So they all get in, in the boat and make their way across the sea to the other side. Jesus was tired from a long day of speaking to the crowds and decided to lay down. When they were a decent way from shore, clouds rolled in and a wind picked up over the sea. The disciples have seen winds pick up when they were out fishing. Not a big deal. Then a light rain begins. Then the thunder begins. The disciples are probably getting a little nervous. The storm gets worse than anything they have ever experienced. Fishermen weren't afraid of storms, but this one was different. Waves crashed into the boat. These experienced fishermen feared for their life. They woke up Jesus and said, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? In that moment, the disciples were amazed that even the winds and waves obey his command.
We came to worship. We go now to serve. We have been given the light. We go now to let it shine. We have been blessed by God's love, and we go now to share it. We are Christ's disciples. We go now to witness to all. Amen.